Well, hello, crime stuffers. Here, here are the two things you enjoy. Serotonin and dopamine. And then what the hell is, what is that? DMT. Uh, you release it every night when you go to sleep, and it's uh, the spirit molecule. Very interesting thing. So, crime stuffers, what do we got going on now? Well, what we've got, beheadings. Really? Are you guys falling for this? Are you really? So, let's see. We create, we recruit, we fund, we staff, we handpick a leader, we provide them with weapons, we give them money, and we call them IS, uh, I, is, is, ISS, I, ISS, ISS. That sounds scary. He's even worse than bin Osama bin Laden. There's your clue. And then you listen to our leaders talk about... <laughs> okay, well, we they're not Al-Qaeda, and we're saving the people, and it's humanitarian war, and look at Libya, how cool that turned out, and look at Iraq, how cool that is, and maybe now we got to go back and drop bombs, and oh, what about Ukraine, and all, just war, 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 all wars are banker wars, and you know what, people are starting to figure it out, and the, I won't spend too terribly much time here uh, on the ridiculous these beheadings, these 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 videos that are fake, really, so they wouldn't show you the actual hacking a head off. And if anybody that hunts, if any of us that have actually killed an animal, and if you try to cut the head off, um, there's a lot of blood, <laughs> a lot more blood than what you. And why do they stop the video? As as I think Larkin Rose put it out, put a nice comment there about uh, the fact that of course they because then they only have to Photoshop one frame because photoshopping actual video that takes work and it's money and you know. Are, these guys have gotten lazy because they know, oh, beheading. And then here's the other thing. So if a guy uses a knife, oh, he's a barbarian. But if we use drones, well, you know, we're civilized and stuff, right? Uh, these guys are killing people with knives and they're barbarians. We're droning wedding parties and double tap striking people in you name the country, Pakistan, Yemen, Africa, right? but, but we're cool, we're cool like that because we use technology, these guys are using knives and machetes or swords or whatever to hack off somebody's head. <sighs> really, you buying this? I'm just, I'm just wondering, are you buying it? Because I'm not buying what they're selling. It's more war based on lies. And then we got this guy, Putin, turns out to be a pretty good chess player, right? Everybody else playing checkers and him playing chess. And kicking ass on, on uh, you know, on the West in more ways than you can shake your finger at, and it's sad because I come from the West and I would like it if my leaders were a little more savvy. And if we were going to go to war, war is the absolute last result. What are you Democrats doing? Right? Oh, it's humanitarian wars from, from, from that guy in Obama. He's he's making he's doing a, a, a humanitarian wars. So we're not going to show up at protest. That would be bad. We and. Besides, that would be racist to show up at a protest. <sighs> really? And then the whole Ferguson thing. Boy, that's sure a good thing that got came along because the Americans were getting really pissed at Israel and the whole Gaza thing and bombing babies over there. And I, you know, I have Facebook friends unfriending me and stuff like that, but I don't give a shit. You got it. You, bombing babies, bad. <laughs> bombing children, bad. Right? Every time the Hamas or the Palestinians send a rocket into Israel and kill like one child. Really? So then you're going to go out there and kill thousands, one or two thousand, knocking down 40 story buildings, right? No, we warn them before we drop bomb. Yeah. You warm them with a bomb and then you bomb them some more. And the children, they're, they're, they're hiding in the mosques. They're hiding in the schools. They're hiding in the hospitals. We're not committing genocide. Uh, it's just self-defense and we're taking care of this action. Really? Uh, funny, between ISS and Israel, it looks like they're drawing, redrawing the lines again. And who, who drew the lines in the first place? Who put people that don't get along together inside the same lines of a nation? Right? More divide and conquer. Who are the guys that drew the lines for Israel? Who are the guys that drew the lines for Syria and Iraq and Iran? Who was it? Was it the Iranians that did that? Was it the was it the Iraqis? Did they even have a say in it? Or did they just, some guys over there in the West, and now those people are starting to get a little annoyed, and they're starting to figure things out. And we got this Arab Spring going on, and we love it. We love it. More war, more war for us. Yay, more war. We get to drop bombs, and we get to use our military. And, you know, this ISIS could be, what, 3,000 guys, could be 7,000, could be 15,000, could be who knows. But you know what? The Kurds, women are picking up arms because these guys... 
apparently are, are quite, you know, they're, they've been trained to be idiots. They've been trained to slaughter and, you know, use the old school to create as much fear as possible. Meantime, in the United States, they're trying to tell you that they're already infiltrating the United States. They're coming across the border. Don't worry about the police state. Don't worry about the cops being militarized and having tanks and armored vehicles and looking like stormtroopers and looking like, you know, non-different from soldiers. They don't look like police uniforms anymore. They got their helmets and their, you know, flak gear on and bulletproof vests and Really, these are, this is what we need in the streets of America because things have gotten so out of control. No, they haven't. Our government's out of control. And that whole story about, oh, is it, uh, justify, justify more. Oh, we need more cops. We need more. These guys vigilant because there's going to be terror on U.S. soil. If there's more terror on U.S. soil, guess who's going to be the guys that, we, if, you, if you, you can never hear it on mainstream media, it'll be crazy conspiracy kooks showing you in no uncertain terms who it was that is doing it, and 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 gee, who who do you think it is? Every freaking time, uh, there and it doesn't matter how many times you show. Oh, the terror plot was foiled by the FBI or the CIA or whoever the hell it was. Give the three digits. Maybe it was the DOJ. Maybe it was you know DHS, Homeland Security. Homeland Security, really, guys? Homeland. It's, it's just painful to watch. Anyway, but the, so you find out about these terror plots, and it turns out that it was the FBI that fomented the plot in the first place. Awesome. Uh, oh, here's a little tidbit that some of you might want to look into. Did Hitler uh, arrest a Rothschild? Is that a, is that a myth, or is that a story, is that true? Did he actually uh, arrest one of those Rothschild guys? One of those Rothschild family guys? That would be a big naughty no-no. Uh, the history that you don't know. That's what's new under the sun. Anyway, um, we won't go there. Because certainly, um, you know, oh, he thinks Hitler was a good guy. No, I didn't say that at all. I didn't say that even a little bit. I just said, take a look at your history. Uh, anybody that messes with the bankers. And right now, the bankers are in firm control of the United States. Speaking of that, silver. Uh, silver actually bounced around underneath $19 today. And people were saying, when the fix goes out, it's going to go through the moon. No, they haven't lost control. Now is an awesome time to be buying silver. Just for seasonality, usually, as we head toward winter, it goes up. But the bankers haven't lost control of that. They haven't lost control of the rains at all. They absolutely, positively want more war. They want to print, they're going to print more dollars. We're going to have inflation. These guys keep talking about, ooh, hyperinflation any minute. Well, no, not any minute, but it's coming. I'm watching prices at my local Costco just creep up and up and up. I have pick and I've been taking pictures on my phone now so I can prove it because the guys at Costco and other people just go, ha, 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 ha. No, this bread was six six dollars not that long ago. And then it was seven, then it was eight, then it was nine. Now it's over ten. Um, same thing with honey, eggs, name it, just stuff, just stuff you buy. Meat and cheese, meat went through the roof. Meat's gone crazy. Everybody's noticed that. Uh, but it's going, there's going to be more. See, and I'm already pretty much, most of my calories come from the vegetarian, but I like a steak. I'll have a steak. Steak doesn't bother me at all. Neither does pork, neither does bacon, none of that. But I know that I feel healthier and feel better when I'm not, when I'm eating more vegetable based food. Uh, but I've got no problem with, yes, yes, I know where steak comes from and I know where pork comes from while you tell me about these things and you're wearing a leather belt and leather shoes. Uh, anyway, so the idea here, guys, is that is silver, fantastic buy. Uh, the whole I ISIS thing is just, let's replace Osama bin Laden. We need a boogeyman. And we know, you know, the, the military that we spend more than anybody else on the planet <laughs> needs somebody to fight with. Uh, oh, here's a cool thing. And I'll just put a link down there. Saltwater powered vehicle. See, here's what's happening. People are starting to figure out. This is another thing. E pluribus unum. What does that mean? From many, one. Rather than trying to make all the money yourself, rather than trying to patent it, because patent is just letting the government know you have something disruptive and they'll suck it up. Take a look at, you know, Geet and a bunch of these other things. There's a, oh, now I'm not going to remember it. It's the something or another act of 1967, 1980s. Anyway, it's basically uh, any disruptive technology can be branded with uh, it's for national security and the patent never gets released and it gets right. 
Okay, so quit patenting. Copyright, same thing. Copyright now, what do they do? They, they made it so that copyright lasts for freaking decades. It's supposed to be where we can share ideas and share information and maybe uh, your copyrighted work, I take that and look at it and go, oh, wait a minute, and I look at this other piece again, I put two together and I make something new. They're trying to stop that, they don't want that. Um, saltwater power vehicle, really? Oh, really? So maybe if you uh, release technology open source or you release disruptive technology open source, they'll have a much harder time stopping it. And if you're the first one that makes the widget that creates power, let's say a little box that uh, has magnets in it and creates spin and from that spin you can make electricity, or if you have like the Brazilians have seem, seem to have figured out um, how to you know start a reaction and then create more electricity than what it took to put it in. Uh, same thing with some of these things. You start once you get the magnets going, they keep spinning, right? Um, and there's, a, I mean, there's technology. There's technology that takes salt water and turns it into electricity via n numerous ways. One is, of course, a fuel cell. This nano fuel cell. Like I said, I'll put a link down there. Um, water is all. You don't have to use an anode and a cathode to break water apart. It's fuel. Damn it, H two O. It's fuel. You don't need. They don't need to be hydrocarbons. You, it can just be hydro. It can just be water, Hyd hydrogen and oxygen. And you don't break apart the molecules using an anode and a cathode frequency. We're gonna bust these things apart frequency. Doesn't take a whole lot of energy for your brain to rearrange these molecules and change them. Anyway, frequency. And then there's other chemical reactions that we don't 100% understand. We don't know what's going on. And then the whole other thing, trying to explain the universe using only gravity instead of the electromagnetic spectrum and understanding that you know it's an electromagnetic universe we're living in and that maybe just maybe what you're looking at if you look at the moon and you look at mars maybe that was some serious electrical discharge because we've got moon rocks falling we've got uh, mars rocks falling on our planet how did that how did they get so that they're traveling around in space and turning into asteroids how did that happen your gravity theory doesn't explain it uh, the theory of electromagnetism does, though, and that the fact that perhaps the planets didn't always do what they're doing now. Could it be true? Or is it that it has always been this thing where we think this is a nice, quiet, peaceful, you know, you know, solar system and everybody's in their happy little orbits and it's always been that way, always been that way and always will be. See, free up your mind. More thinking. More thinking required. Einstein was not happy with his with his work. When he was done, he said it didn't explain enough and it needed more, it basically he said it needs more work. Um, the thing that he was missing, as Tesla and others have pointed out, was electromagnetism. It's an electric universe, my friends. Uh, and universities and so forth will not give you, they won't even look because they're stuck in the old way of thinking. So when it comes to like over unity, when it comes to devices that turn water into fuel, when it comes to making electricity, when it comes, so how do you beat that? Well, you beat it with open source. You know, like, the, like the Brazilians say, they're, not, they're no longer It's not lo looking for proof of con They're looking for customers. So if they have a device that they say, and I'll put a link down there, makes electricity uh, and it doesn't work, I think their customers would be unhappy if you pay $5,000 for this box and it doesn't create the power that it says it will. Um, then people are going to be upset. Pretty simple. Okay. Um, I can go on and on. You know, there's plenty of like global warming. Wow, they get busted again in Australia. Put some links down there. Um, people have been trained to say, oh, if you don't believe, listen to the words, if you don't believe in global warming, then you don't care about the planet and you don't, you're anti-science. No, I'm actually very pro-science, mathematics, and honest science and not politicized science. And I look at the raw data. When you look at their model data, yeah, they can make it look like it's getting warm, but it hasn't been 15 years. The raw data shows it's been years and years. It's been over a decade, and we're going into what's going to be an awfully cool winter uh, due to the fact that we've, we're hit the solar minimum, the sun. Now, can humans screw up the planet? Yes, we can, and we've proven it over and over again. And do we need to clean up? Yep. But using uh, the CO2 theory, which is obviously false because... It's been 15 years and we're not having warming. We're having cooling. Uh, if, or it, It's either flat or a cooling trend. Kind of like the silver. It's either flat or, right? Okay, but it's going to ramp up. 
I don't know if the if the whole you know climate is going to ramp up and get more heat and you know start warming that they keep talking. Doesn't look like it. Certainly not because of CO two. And if we were so worried about CO two, Planet Hemp, there are plenty of physicists to talk about the fact that if you want, I mean, there's nitrogen fixers, there's carbon fixers. Plant more carbon fixers, and we'll pull the carbon out of the atmosphere. Um, but then they use this to for justifying nuclear energy and for justifying fracking and natural gas and for just right and we got these guys going on marches we're marching for the climate tax us tax us we need to march for the climate no it's about control right there's plenty of evidence showing that the west doesn't want africa and other places to have resources and you make electricity the way we have and all of this is moot anyway if they would quit controlling it we could have technology that didn't pollute that made plenty of energy and we're not going to grow if economies are not going to grow at a scale if we don't have more energy. But see, I think 10, 15 years from now, I think things are going to be massively changed. They're trying to give you this dystopian world that's so sad and terrible and polluted and so forth. But I think things are going to change rather rapidly because people are starting to wake up. Wait a minute. We're not destroying the planet. The planet will be fine. This planet has been hit by comets. We had we have polar shit. We have, we've seen... And, you know, the, hist the record shows, let the record show, that this planet has been through a whole lot worse than humans before. And somehow life flourished and came back from, you know, ice ages where it looks like it was frozen to the equator. Where, you know, the comets that hit and made, it, you know, caused mass extinction and so forth. Humans just won't be here. Right? With what we're doing, we could put ourselves out of business <laughs> on the planet. But the planet will be fine. And then, you know, who knows what's going to come up next after us. But, you know, or we could get our acts together and we could figure out how to get off the planet. We could figure out how to live peacefully without bombing each other and killing each other over imaginary friends and, and these ridiculous gods that, oh, my God's better than your God. And, and oh, you've got resources we want. Oh, we want to make sure that this piece of paper is we keep these peasants using it and trading it back and forth while we keep inflating it and making it worth less and less until it's worthless. And we're not going to use silver or gold or anything like that. And and you know what? The petrodollar. Anyway, if you if you think that raising the minimum wage is going to uh, fix the problem, you don't understand the problem. If you think that the CO two is causing the worth the world to heat up, uh, you don't understand the, the bigger picture of what's going on and how they're using that for control. Uh, and it's it's it, the raw data. It's they get caught over and over and oh, how many times do they have to get caught rigging data? How many times do they have to get caught? Because what? Here's how science works, right? And you fuckwits that are saying, oh, he's anti-science. Um, science works like this: a hypothesis, collect data to see if your hypothesis is true, um, and then you know, come to a conclusion based on the data you collect. Uh, what's going on now is what we have is these guys doing global warming. And uh, they, their theory is wrong. Their CO2 theory is ridiculous with their backscatter, Planck's law and backscatter radiation that has never, black body, sorry, back, black body radiation that has never been witnessed in the real electromagnetic, here in reality, never seen it in person. It's a way to explain, again, because they're missing the, par the portion of the electromagnetism, but we won't go there. Anyhow, um, and it has to do with gravity, has to do with electromagnetic, uh, that's, study that. Um, if you want to know, and also electricity has to do, I did a other video where you saw it in the background, where electricity and economics, currency, the way things flow, uh, have a lot to do with each other. And then, of course, the mathematics applied to the economy, but the, or the economy and economics. But the idea here is that, you know, electronic, you know, harmonic frequency, electronic resonance, electronic, electrical resonance, electronic frequency, elect, electro, oh, it's big. It's a, it's, it's a big damn deal, and we don't understand enough about it. And if we do go that way, and, and all of our universities try to keep you from doing it, um, free energy, so-called free energy, because you still got a like, free energy device. It's $5,000. It's not free, but it creates electricity for the next you know, 20 years or whatever. Like your car. You know, just you buy a car once, and you travel around. It's not free. You don't drive around for free, but you buy the car once. You don't have to pay every single time you get in the car. Um, <laughs> depending on the kind of car you buy because <laughs> if you got certain brands uh kind of yeah you do but i mean you know we could be running these vehicles on on water you can convert a 350 engine to run on water <gasps> stanley meyer well, tons of other people figure this stuff out and it's starting they're figuring out that this is key 
uh, to break in the back of our banker buddies who create war and who try to control the energy and who try to keep, you know, they try to keep us down, man. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. I've already gone 20 minutes. Oh my goodness. Uh, maybe you could watch this thing in stages. E pluribus unum. Enjoy yourselves and understand things are getting better, not worse. They just look like they're getting worse, but things are getting better. The people are starting to figure out the open source concept and that they can't kill open source. Same thing with Bitcoin and the blockchain and so forth. You can't have it where you keep all the information and try to make all the money off the device. What you do, you're going to make a crap load of money anyway. Let the information out. Let the pe copycats out. Let the people maybe improve on your design, come up with something better. Meantime, you're still going to make a crap load of money, right? And I know there's a lot of people out there that understand water is fuel and they have all kinds of devices for creating energy, either from water, making hydrogen, or from the fact that it's an electromagnetic universe. All right, I've spoken enough. Really, the only things you enjoy, dopamine, serotonin. And, and this DMT thing, just crazy, just crazy. Look how simple that thing is. And yet, okay.